is Edmonton three and Boston two. Someone yeah, get they it. just what happens but, is they don't that yeah, quick jump. But they, you lose well, a little bit of that. Well the <laughs> oh, was, before you saw that. Well, I, I, I agree with stuff. all of you. It was a, it was a I think if you took the um, almost 60 minutes of those three overtimes, then you would have put them on a separate tape and have somebody view it and not know the situation that existed, you'd say, that's not very good hockey. The aren't skating fast, the aren't connecting passes. But when you factor in the exhaustion, the tension, the drama of the moment, then it's magnificent. Let me I, ask you this. I, I, think that, I think the series is, I mean, I, I mean, flip a coin right now. I mean, Edmonton is a better team than I thought they were. And flip a coin, who's going to win it? What area you know, has impressed you that you weren't quite sure about? Well, that what impressed what impresses me now, what the Bruins, what has impressed me all year is that, man, they played at a, at a level and they had one little dip during the season and, and that was it. And that, I mean, uh, you know, there's a new hero every night, as I've said many times. And, 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 and before the series started, I didn't think anybody could beat the Bruins. And, and the Bruins may, you know, could still beat, beat the Oilers, but the Oilers are a better team. Let me ask myself. you this. They are the better team. Yeah, let's talk about Milbury versus Muckler and the coaching situation and what coaching plays as well as uh, the influence that coaching has in that situation. Muckler puts on Klima, who hadn't played since, by his own admission, 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> that was a great line. <laughs> the day before it was a great line. <laughs> Byers only got three minutes. I mean, is Milbury to be faulted because he didn't put fresh legs on the ice? Oh, absolutely not. That's, that's one of the advantages I think the Oilers have. They have a little more depth than the Bruins. And I think that's, that's one. I think you all have to agree, Joe. Uh, if any one of those uh, post shots had gone in, they'd be faulting Muckleth for not playing his fresh legs. It wasn't a magnificent I mean, goal either, by the way. I thought that after, for all that, it was I mean, disappointing. I think it's a legitimate question, ended, though, isn't it? I mean, no, because they not, made such a no, big no. deal. Because it is not a legitimate bringing? question if you consider the nature of the goal. Did he do something spectacular? He shot the puck between a goalie's legs in the 115th minute of a game, and it wasn't a great bullet of a shot what? or anything else. I'm sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> You're okay. Question? Give me a little bit of ice. May I ask? That's really... That's, that, that is, is ridiculous. Really oh, really? That's How could you say that? Anybody on the ice could have done it. <laughs> but Klima did it, and it makes for a better story because we journalists, mm. quote-unquote, are always looking for a quote-unquote angle, that's even a, if it doesn't exist. That's a totally ludicrous It was a totally position. ironic, superfluous yeah. aspect of the that's game. That's not true, Bob. Only if he did something that no one else on the ice could have done what? would have been relevant. Oh, right. What like what? Do oh. handstands oh. because he was oh. fresh? Skate, I'll skate somebody to a You're going to love this show. We some... can have you on every week. What did he like do that was so athletically wonderful? Tell he me. He had fresh legs. Tell me. Oh, the, the, the legs put the puck oh. between the I'm goalies. Like, even by no, I never mission. saw the puck. Excuse was me. It a I never saw... Excuse me. I'm trying to help you in this situation. Five minutes ago, you said it became noticeable throughout yes. the second and third period that they were slowing down. Yes. This guy hadn't played throughout the second and third overtime period. To me... If you could notice that they were slowing down, a guy who had Did he played... make a headlong rush of the ice? He took a drop no, pass talk... and put a shot that was not a great shot between a tired goalie's legs. Okay. Anybody could All have right. done right. it. That's what I'm ask, saying. Can we ask his eminence to step in here and please, uh, <laughs> in the, the middle of this time? argument? Do you... this I, was sure. I, thought, I thought the puck was kind of... It rolling. hit something and yeah. rolling a little bit. Was, did anyone get He's a... on my side, but he doesn't want to embarrass you so. too much. No, no, no. I, I mean, what, you know, <laughs> for, I for you, Bob, to... I think you have to go back. I mean, if he had fresh legs, maybe he can, came from way behind the play and caught up to make it a three-on-two. Thank two. you. Maybe. Well, you might have gotten right. shot off faster, more snap. That's because, all. Because, yeah, obviously, if you're, if you're fresh, you're going to have more going for you. know that the evidence isn't there to support that. What, 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 what do you mean? He scored the, the winning goal. He didn't. Is that not the evidence? I, Is that not no. self-evident? There's 17,000 no. kinds one of goals. We, this was one of them, and it didn't reflect you gotta, you know, a you, guy. You want to get on this show, you got to interrupt people. Couldn't do well, they're arguing. What? We're going to take a little break, and they can continue to argue, but we'll be Go back to take on Peter Klamer, whatever his name goal. is, who scored the winning goal. So you wait there and come back. No waste time for you. We haven't settled anything yet. Uh, Bob Lobel, Joe Fitzgerald, uh, Bob Ryan, and of course his eminence, Bobby Orr. And uh, I guess uh, we were talking a little bit uh, off camera about uh, the goalie situation. Is there is there any place you and Joe Fitzgerald were talking about? Is there any place where Reggie Lemon should appear in this series? It's a little premature for that, but yeah, well, I think you've always got to keep it in the back of your mind. Personally, I'd be shocked if it happened, but I think uh, um, Andy has to give. Reason to replace right. him, and he hasn't given that reason so far. Uh, in touch wood injury. But if they go home, back down Edmonton two nothing, if they go out there two nothing, would you bring Lemelin back? Well, I think you have to look at how oh, uh, Andy played, how Andy played yeah. against him in Edmonton, or how how Reggie played in Edmonton. I mean, I think they would probably put some thought into it. That whole thing it's tough. Me I mean, Re uh, Andy's played so well for them. I mean, so is Reggie. He has to give them a very good reason. Uh, 
for taking him out. But what has what has Reggie done to deserve being banished, other than being the the victim of a superstition which says you don't tinker with success? You have 18 no, other players coming and going like like two-way so traffic. If, 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 if Reggie had played well in the very first game uh, back against Hartford. He, he might have been the guy. Yeah, but let me, let me, what he didn't do was play well in the first game. No, 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 no. Yeah, and Reggie, and Reggie's the other guy. The, second the whole game, and team the other guy stuck. Got and all the other guys who stuck as oh, much as he did are still Joe, playing. Joe, I don't think we're criticizing Reggie Lemelin. He's been no. wonderful for the Bruins. He's been wonderful. And if you go back before the playoffs started, and gosh, it might have been your paper, uh, Reggie said that if, 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 you, if you get a hot goalie, go with him. You've got to go with him. Oh, what whether, else whether it be... He's right, though. He can't I say agree. Play with it. Trade me. Red Sox shortstop say that. I agree that the Bruins goalies don't. <laughs> but I mean, he, he, if you've he got knows. a hot goaltender, why would you take him out, Joe? <laughs> well, because the other guy might do as well if given a chance, but he's being denied the chance because this guy's doing well. I think that where is it written in stone that they can't both do well and both share in that ride to the Stanley Cup? But because one guy does well this night, he must never sit down again. I mean, why? Sure, What's the logic? Of, of what? You're sharing a ride? What is this? I mean, this is a... It's when you're hot, you're hot. That's not an issue. Of course what? it is. It's not superstitious. You give them a to participate in the fun? Is that what you're saying? Superstitious. Yeah, I wouldn't make that case. Win. Of course the I'd make that win. case. Yeah, in the way, why I would you want to win the fun? Mike Milbury finished first all year long by rotating all two good goalies. Long. This is the playoffs. They got a hot So why do you change all of a sudden in the playoffs? From what worked well all I understand that. Well, you're, you're talking to a guy who would not bring Brian Shaw back because they had the same uh, And as I point out, the reason that the, the change yeah, he, made, he say he Reggie Lillard played in the first game against Hartford, and I don't care what you say. Well, let me ask bad. you something. If Andy Moog played well October 30th, why shouldn't he play until February 4th if he's doing well and never see Reggie? We're not talking well, the season's about because you're 70 games. I mean, we're talking about seven games in the Stanley Cup the playoffs. playoffs. And if the guy's playing well, why would you want to move him? Well, the assumption is the other guy won't play well. But, but you don't no, want to take, to a, take a look you at the got, other guy. This guy playing well, very well, right? Well, you guys have all bought into this, this, not, this old if, wives. If, if, what if, do you if, do? If, if you're the coach, if Reggie were sitting here with us, he would agree with what's happening. He'd have to agree happened. with us. Otherwise, he'd be, he'd be well, divisive. Then, uh, you, I read a story so you did you know, with Reggie the other day. I'm, I'll bet, did he not tell you off the record or, or in conversation, Joe, that, that, hey, he's the hot goalie, he should be the one that's playing? He understands that right. the team plays well in front of the, the goalie he has confidence in, and right now it's confidence it's in Moe. That's nothing no, to do with confidence, Joe. Joe you just wanted to, you're just making this into well, like some business of equity. It has nothing to do with equity. It's right, nothing to do with what you do in the regular season. It, it's a common, there's nothing happening out of the ordinary here. Why are you acting so surprised? Right, well, why should I be surprised? Well, because my, surprised. Feel, my feeling is because they do it, doesn't mean I have to sit here and defend it, or you do either. I think it's, I think it's crazy. So you, right, well, let, let's go back to what you, what were you saying uh, before you were rudely interrupted by Bob? <laughs> about, I'm sorry, about, uh, about the, the goalie. You, you, your feeling is don't change goalies, Oh, no, right? I, I think if you have a hot goal, it's, as long as I can remember, that's the way it's been in playoff time. Right. We're not talking about 80 games, and, and Reggie Lemelin is a big reason for the Bruins being where they are, and it's, it's, it, it's nice to, to have a goaltender that's playing as well as Andy, but God forbid if anything should happen, well, got Reg, not, Reggie there, and Reggie's going to be ready, and Reggie's ready. I'm not an advocate I for bringing Lemelin him. back, Bobby, but, but, but Joe, what if they're down 2 nothing, and you need to shake up the order? Well, I, I think they'll have to put some thought into it. I, right. I, so I, that I, means you'd favor, if they're down 2 nothing going to Edmonton, you, know, you would not be surprised to see them go with Lemelin. I think if they, uh, you know, if... Okay, let's say they lose game 2 one nothing. Yeah, I was, going to, I was going to say, it's one thing if you get beat 6-1. Yeah, so no, 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 no. Let's say there's one nothing, 3-2, they lose... A low scoring game, okay? Yeah. You still come back maybe with Lemelin to, just to, to mix things up because you're down to nothing and know you got to win two games out there in their building. You might, but that'd be about ridiculous. Ridiculous. What, what if, the guy, ridiculous. if the guy's playing well, why do you change him? Maybe the team in front of him isn't playing That's well. the whole foolish premise of this conversation. What, what, what the worst we... reason for doing something, in my mind, okay, is because we've always done it this way. I don't care what we've always done. Like I'm talking about right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Oh, I like keeping the guard. We've always had it, so we'll keep yeah, it. Just, Absolutely. What? I'm sorry. We're in that dump the other night and the lights go out. Oh, I'm missing something. I am too. Right. We're, we're in that dump the other night and the lights go out. <laughs> well, let me we're, tell you, the lights have gone out in in, four, in in the Hotel Meridian, in the Parker House. We're on, we're on yeah, but they're not playing a hockey game there. I dare say in Channel 38, the lights have gone out on occasion, too. Please. You agree we need a new garden, right? Then, then you know, Ray Bork played 50-some minutes the other day, Joe. You're saying that Ray shouldn't play that much, should let someone else play. Yeah. No, I'm saying that other players will, will <laughs> normally, yeah, yeah. Other players well, will well, normally rotate in, in the floor of a game. Only the goalie. That's the only position 
where somehow you are somehow being uh, accountable for one bad night in the hot, but five weeks ago, and you won't Joe, play we're not, again. We're not well, saying that not, at all. It's you, boy, you, you, it's, it's ridiculous. It's not what anybody has said. It is the reason why Moog played the second yeah. game of the Hartford series. Really? Yes. Why? Part of the reason why. The team was bad, and, and among well, Why wasn't the team people, benched? Because you can't recall, bench the team. Joe, as I recall, so you benched the goalie. Excuse me, but I recall, I think it was something like three goals in the first seven shots, and I think it was generally agreed that the, uh, one uh, or maybe two, were the, it was culp culpability on part of, the, of Mr. Lemlin. Who, so you go with the other guy, and it just so happened he's now a victim of circumstance. Period. Yes. Which you want to be able to understand. I do. So this is a I don't. I don't like it. This is a business. I'm making. This is a business, and winning is what it's all about. See, and, and that's what he said. Bobby you're Orr stating the facts. I'm disagreeing with, with what they're winning. doing. So we're going to take a break so we can pay for the show because this is a business and this is a show. <laughs> that's almost ridiculous. <laughs> Well, we're still arguing about Reggie Lemon and Andy Moog, but we're going to move on to another subject, the Boston Garden. But before we get to that, uh, Bobby, just a quick synopsis. I don't think anybody expected Ranford to play the way he played the other night. Uh, 51, 52 uh, shots that he actually stopped. Uh, your feelings about him, has he improved since he left here? And a lot? To no question. You know, when Fuhrer was injured, you know, they had to go with Ranford, so he's played a lot. I watched a couple of games, uh, uh, three games in the Chicago series, and he played very well there, too. And uh, he's... He's been playing, he's, no question he's improved, but uh, uh, we keep waiting for him to, to have that uh, bad night, and he hasn't had it. Well, they came out after him early, and uh, he's, you know, stopped practically everything. Yeah, he was, you know, there was good lucky a little bit, but you have to be lucky. <laughs> is, uh, is hockey to you, I mean, to me, hockey has more luck involved in the no game sure. of hockey than any other no sport? Question. No question. A bounce of the puck. Uh, someone just not reacting sure, quickly. Not, but no yeah. different than baseball, those two. You have the line drive out, you have the, the swinging bunt, you know, and, and certain same thing in one situation results in a, in a good action versus a, a bad uh, action. In hockey, you hit the post, you don't hit the, they hit five, five, I believe we have documented, hit the post or crossbars, it happens. Bruins, in effect, outplayed Edmonton the other night and didn't win the game. If, if, if I were to ask you, before we get to, to uh, the rape of the Boston Garden, if I was to ask you uh, right now, uh, who you would pick to win this series? Would it be Edmonton? I think flip if you were hand, hand the, the, Before the series started, I, I, nobody can beat the Bruins. I think Edmonton ha, have a chance to beat the Bruins, but uh, uh, they're going to have to play awfully well. The Bruins are a team that just they just don't quit, and, and they're playing, and they're disciplined. Uh, Mike Milbury has done a fantastic job with them, and everyone is contributing, and that's the key. This Wes Waltz thing is a mystery to me. Here we go. Oh, yeah. oh I'm, Here we go. A mystery. I'm not saying yeah. it would have made a difference, although it might have made a difference, but it it's a mystery because of the way that people have changed and the game has changed. Maybe 10 years ago, here's a kid that would have had a chance to come and play in the Stanley Cup Finals, and, and now he can't agree on a contract. I mean, to me, it's significant the way the game has changed, the way that people are looking at the game. I mean, hockey was always a throwback to another era. The people that played it were pure, and, and, and they were like the ultimate sportsmen. They still are, in proportion. What's he saying? <laughs> I know what you're pure. saying. I, I throw that word pure around. Right. Pure was probably a wrong choice of words. I think you mean Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that. that. Obviously, as the driven snow. Obviously, he and his agent were about to compromise a long-term negotiating situation for this kid by signing him to a contract just so he could participate in the 1990 Stanley Cup. It, the stakes have changed. I mean, 25 or 30 or 40 years ago, the money amounts were so inconsequential to start with that, it, uh, you know, this would have been an easy sign. The kid wouldn't have worried about it, but the world has changed. But if, if you were coming out I think out the Bruins would have taken, done everything they could to get this guy. But, well, they, they went as far as they're going to go. If you were coming out today well, and you're West Waltz, would you have held out? Well, I, all I want to do is play in the NHL. I don't that's think so. What I mean. That's what uh, that's, that's but, but, I mean. I mean, I mean, uh, we're all was, different. I mean, you can't, you can't be angry with, with Wes. It, it's too bad Wes isn't here. He's, he's an offensive threat. And, and you know, but the, the world Bruins, we, the Bruins was indentured at age need goals. 12. I, I didn't think I anything believe, of it. I think I brought that up. The world has changed. He was indentured at age 12. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's a damn good thing for the city, but it happened. And, and uh, nobody's <laughs> apologizing for it now. But the fact is that it, that such thing cannot happen any longer. And that was the era when the Canadians had a monopoly on every French-speaking player. And, and there's another league coming, uh, Bob. Are so you going to be the president of the league? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, to tell us, give us a no. scoop on sports. There, there is another the league world. coming, and they'll be, they'll be chasing West, so we don't know what's going on over there either. Why do you think hockey players make so little money compared to the Television. other sports? 
TV? I mean, I, I, I know you have television, too, but you don't think that We don't clubs, have television like the, the No, NBA, you don't, the NFL, the NFL but don't NFL. you think, for instance, Ray Bork, they're talking about him this year, that he should be a $2 million man if Gretzky was and some of the other people in the league. Uh, you mean to tell me that the Jacobs brothers couldn't afford to pay Ray Bork $1.5 million with or without television? Well, I hope Ray gets all he can get. Uh, and and he's, he's certainly going to get a raise and deserves a raise and, and a but substantial the, raise. But don't you think the league hides behind this whole thing that we don't have the big television money to therefore to keep the salaries down? Well, they make money, uh, Upton, but, uh, but you know, the, the contracts that I read about with, with television uh, for the other leagues, it's unbelievable the well, amount of money they get at the beginning of the season. Uh, to, you know, it's, it's incredible. And we just don't have that in hockey, Upton. And I, I think we can... Our salaries will, will will rise, but I don't think we'll ever get to where the other sports are. It just are. so happens that in anticipation of an expected salary boom to take place in this premise in the next three or four years, that the Quebec Nordiques are, are about to uh, emulate the Celtics and, and go public in an attempt to raise well, revenue. Well, there's a team to emulate. Yeah, I can't no, wait but they, to emulate them. Of course, yeah. of course, they're at the nadir yeah. of their artistic excellence right now, but the fact is they're still a very successful commercial venture in Quebec. I mean a great deal. They feel that they can tap into the same kind of vein of public sentiment in Quebec <laughs> over the Nordiques that the Celtics did nationwide by putting themselves up partially public to raise this revenue. Uh, the gentleman, Pierre Obu, whose idea this is, he's, his premise is that hockey is, in fact, on the eve of a salary explosion. Without the television revenues, where's the money going to come from? The money's going to come, and he thinks, in his case, from this public sale. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting to see if other teams uh, follow indeed. suit, because uh, the revenues obviously aren't equal to the, the other sports, but uh, these players are, are woefully underpaid. There's no uh, question. Bobby, in, in one minute or less, before we take our next break, and we don't want you to leave because we want to get on the Boston Garden. Joe's been chomping at the bit. Uh, if you were to take uh, Molly Ziegler's place, uh, what would you there do? There was a sighting this week. Somebody I did see him I, in Boston. I, I did. He was, he <laughs> was, he was, he was with uh, his fourth date. Exciting. What 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 can be done to improve hockey? If you were to step into that chair tomorrow, I'm not talking about the game itself, but how to market the game, what can be done? It just seems such a great game really in this country really hasn't been marketed very well. Well, we, we have to expand. Uh, you, we can't expand anymore in Canada. When I say expand, we have to uh, teach people in many areas in the United States about hockey, and I don't, I don't believe we're doing a great job uh, at that. Um, I don't believe in expansion. I, I think we have, uh, we're going on the right track now in the NHL, and, and we do have some parity, however we, we arrive there. Uh, but expansion, I think, will hurt us. Uh, and I'm just reading about what's going on in Minnesota and San Francisco yeah. and San Jose. I mean, you know, that's, that's a, a strange deal, but uh, we've got to do some work. We've got to, uh, I mean, there are fewer kids playing the game now, Joe, and you spend a lot of time at rinks. And, sure do. And those kids are the foundation for the NHL, and we just got to encourage every youngster that wants to play to play this do game. Do you have any personal uh, feel or knowledge as to, as to whether the South will ever rise in this regard? Obviously, it's the, it's the territory, the great vast mm -hmm. expanse of the South and Southwest that haven't caught on to this game. Have you ever had any reason to figure out why? Or any exposure to to, no, to I mean, tap baseball? Interest. I mean, down south baseball, football, or, or yeah, football. So you know, but you know, when they, when they yeah, first went to Atlanta, they, Atlanta, they did fine. When they first went to Charlotte, the oh, they, you can't forget the South. Forget them. They're not Atlanta, worth, uh, New Orleans. What's going to happen? Explosion. What's going to happen in the West Coast? Uh, in, in the West Coast, if Wayne Gretzky's not in L.A., nothing. They go back to yeah. taking a snooze and going so, to the beach. So. And in the meantime, we have to take a little break. Why is it big deal about getting bigger and better all the time? Why? Why not just concentrate You've on what you have? You've got to sell it throughout the why? country. This is why? why? Well, because uh, this why? sport isn't sold. It's a great sport. I love this sport. And I say, you, you're just going to well, dismiss why? the well, South completely? Why? Why not? Why? Why? It did well in Atlanta while it was there. To let no, no. Sold it it did well in Atlanta while he was there. Yeah. Big difference. Okay. But, yeah, so uh, what's well, the big deal? Why is it well, a big, other people around? Why is it important to be in the know. South, Upton? Well, I like him, but I mean, there are other people around. Why is it important the game is big in the South? Because you got to sell it to the whole country. you got to get the television contract. Why? Why not? Did it go in Atlanta? There's the reason. What? Why not? It's a better chance. No, I mean, the answer, you know. I mean, no, you ask me a rhetorical question, yeah. or you ask, I mean, you, you know the answer to that question, right? Well, well anyway, well, you know the answer. answer. I do know well, the answer. We really okay. have to take a break, and we really will be <laughs> back to continue this. No, I'm sorry. Well, I do. I really like to see a new Boston Garden. I guess the only person at this table who has come to this table to break bread is Joe Fitzgerald, who loves that rat trap. Uh, that's left over oh, there on Causeway God, like that Street. Rat trap, please. Uh, but I, I'd like to ask Bobby first before we get on you. <laughs> Bobby, what, what do you think of, the, of having a new garden? You played in that mausoleum all those years, and you've been around there. Don't, don't you think this city really is deserving and needs 
a privately financed, which we're going to get Boston. Oh, but that's the question. Don't make a speech. Come well, on. Just look at to you. <laughs> Joe and I have discussed this many times. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. I think Boston uh, uh, should have a new building. Yes, I think the garden has been a great building. We have a lot of great memories from the garden, Joe. But, Some of us uh, cherish them more than others. Oh, I <laughs> loves to live in the past. Uh, right? But I, I, I think it's time uh, mm -hmm. for a new garden. Yes. Joe, do you own a TV? Do I what? Own a TV? Do I own a TV? Oh, yes. Do you own a TV? Do you own no. an electric blank? No. Do you own no. a toaster? No. Do you have indoor plumbing? No. You got a roof? No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, anything I say yes is going to obviously support some premise which is going to assault me to make the point that somehow I'm wrong in the garden. Well, give, give, us, your, the give, garden. Us, give us your wrong yeah. verse. No, no, of course I'm not. Well, why Real not? good feeling to do business in if you're a businessman, isn't it? Yo. Good, good business. Really good. I should tear down the garden so somebody like, like Jerry Jacobs can make more money? What do I care about Jerry Jacobs? Hey, if there weren't Jerry Jacobs in the world, there wouldn't be any buildings, and you wouldn't have a job uh, in, this, in this world, and in, in, in this Please. field, and I wouldn't either. You have to have people that... You gotta have a building. You, you, you gotta have a building. You, you, you gotta have amateur. owners. Boy, they, their best friend is a guy like you with a column who says that kind of nonsense. It's true. That's the best friend they've got. What are you gonna do, playing Tobin Jim? No. What I'm saying is that you know, the, there's got to be a case somebody can make besides Joe Fitzgerald. I'm getting tired of hearing myself on the issue. You know why? Yeah, maybe you should just Joe, say, hey, well, maybe I'm James wrong. James Fenimore Cooper. No, I'm not wrong. Well, I'm you're not wrong. of the Mohicans. No, your feelings are in, in the right place. You're whistling in the dark. It's just that your premise is wrong. You know, all over well, this... You're really all, right, but you're wrong. All over this city, you go through the, um, the south end, the north end, old buildings, what they're doing is they're gutting them. And they're bringing in all the modern things, you know, microwaves and air conditioning and all the things that make... <laughs> Toilets. <it more>. <laughs> Please. <laughs> The point I'm making is they're trying to um, marry what they cherish of the past with what they need for today and somehow be able to keep things as they used to be but not at the expense of modern conveniences. It's being done all over the city. What, what and it, like could be done the in, hey, it could be done in Boston Garden. What do you like about the building? Except all these, 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 these profiteers, these, these money makers, with the help of guys like you, are oh. going to tear down my memories Make a healthy buck and leave. Your memories exist right there. Yeah. Keep Joe. your memories, damn Joe. it. Keep yeah. them. So We're the not going to tear them When's the last time? Keep them. Have, have you recently <laughs> sat in the, in a seat or, 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 or other than the press box in that building for oh, either of the two? Of course I have. What a cheap shot. I'm asking. I have. I have to have the answer because before Yes, I have. You, my you, wife sits there. My kids sit there. Have you sat in any of the Yes, I have. I've been all over that guy. you think the building's fine? I think the building can be renovated. And the people who made that. Are you an architect? The people who made that case best are the people who own the garden now. And about three or four years ago, when they were about to lose the garden by eminent domain, they made the case powerfully with architectural studies, scientific studies. We can take out these columns. You can raise this roof. You can bring in the air conditioning. They made the case when it behooved them. All of a sudden now, they get in bed with City Hall, and suddenly the very same people who told me the building was functional now say it won't last. I say, wait a minute. Were you lying then, or are you lying now? Well, Bobby, you were involved uh, on a lot of different ends on the new garden. Upton, do you, do you agree with Do you oh, agree oh, with Joe? Upton. Three against uh, one is enough. Three, uh, three against. On this yeah, issue, a <laughs> hundred against one wouldn't stop me. That's how I but feel. But why do you insist on being so foolish about this What's situation? What's foolish, Upton? I mean, just as Lobel said, your memories are in here. Yeah, but What's he also he does garden? make a point, though, that uh, thank you, Bob. That the people. Uh, I don't think the, I don't think his point is is the building itself with him, and he can correct me, I'm not presuming to speak. So far, you're doing well, so far. I think the point is, and how it's being done, it's true, these guys have been profiteers, and they have talked out of both sides of their mouth in putting this thing together. There's no question about that. For some reason, you know, when Paul Mooney left, there was a great weight lifted from this city, because he was such a domineering type of person, and, and, uh, and the image of the garden, public relations-wise, has been changed dramatically with Larry Moulter and the people that run it. A dramatic change. But the basics are still in place. These guys are, uh, are running a very uh, uh, big-time business. Why and, shouldn't they? Well, I'm not saying they shouldn't, uh, but Joe makes a point. They have talked out of both sides of their mm -hmm. mouth in saying, we need this, we need this, we need this. I disagree with him because I do think we need a new building. I think it, it the, but that's where I, but I do agree with him in that the, the enemy is, is not the building itself. The enemy, uh, although they are cloaking it very well in a public relations position that 
is much better than it used to be. The enemy is still the people behind it. But, but don't most people get things done by talking on both sides of their mouth? I, I that mean, may that's, be true, Upton. That that's may or business. may not no. be true. Upton, please. No. Don't no, 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 mean, no, no. no. Things get no. built. I mean, you think it get built in a, one in of the a worst straight line? One of the worst problems now is that so many people in public life, they measure everything they say to, to the reaction they anticipate. And rather than say how they really feel, they say what's politically expedient and what will work in a PR sense. Stop that nonsense. Say how you feel. How I feel is there's a place for, for uh, traditions, there's a, face, uh, a place for things that aren't beautiful, aren't new, aren't current, aren't modern, but are special. And the garden is very special. So keep the seats. Do, um, I, I just don't no, understand. No, no, that's the last thing I need to do I know, is keep the I've, seats. It's just, it's just ridiculous to me it's not ridiculous. That, that you shouldn't have a modern garden where people can go in there and feel like they're not in some toilet. We don't have I mean, I, enough I, time to annotate the logical reasons <laughs> for a new building. If we were on the air for two hours, we couldn't even begin to exhaust the reasons. There are so many reasons. There is no rational argument against it. We'll break while we continue on with this uh, subject about annotating uh, all the reasons for the new garden. When we come back, we'll figure out who we're going to wrap at that moment. Thank you. We're into luxury boxes, and the argument continues to go on. In fact, the, the flames get worse and worse. Uh, Joe Fitzgerald, now, now you're into luxury boxes. Don't you realize that you cannot build any new st stadium or arena today without selling those luxury boxes? They're the premise for being able to raise the money. I yes, mean, it's just, I do realize it's, that. Uh, well, th then why are you so against it? What do you want them to do? Against what? Luxury boxes? Yeah. Who's against luxury boxes? Well, I mean, th but that's the way you get it sold, right? Yes, okay. No so so, well, so if, if somebody comes in and charges a company, if some company wants to pay forty or fifty or sixty or seventy thousand dollars, who cares? Let, let them. Okay. What's the problem? There is no problem. Well, what are we talking well, you, about? You were complaining about luxury boxes, weren't you? I'm saying that the people who are putting together the plans for a new garden, one of the things they're doing is a, as an enticement is to show these new luxury boxes. And I'm thinking those people who wear the you know, the green fingernail polish and, and the green jerseys <laughs> and all year long put bumper stickers on the cars saying go Celtics go they don't sit in those luxury boxes they're not fans or customers they're, 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 you said they're, customers. they're patrons please patrons but they would they wouldn't be able to go to a new garden unless those people bought those luxury you know, the boxes guy, the in, in guy, order to keep raymond bark in boston they better have some luxury boxes that's right. because that's how they're going to pay him what do you mean no <laughs> well don't pay bork forget it no, forget bork well, it's, 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 it's the bottom line of everything. Honestly, honestly, it's the bottom line of everything. The almighty buck. Is, is that what it's well, down what to? Well, people pay. Players get paid, right? You get a new building. You bring the floor and the flags for basketball. You make sure it's 194 feet instead of 200 for, for hockey. And, yes. and, and, and you got your tradition. Thank you very much. Right. Don't bring all the ruins. You know what? There's a part of that tradition. Get rid of those other flags. There's a part of that tradition that might involve right? like six or seven thousand people. From, from Revere, from Charleston, from Dorchester, <laughs> who go to those games. That's part of it. Right. Yeah, right. Where do they go, Bob? Leave the flags the alone. <laughs> like, oh, really? Hey, they're, paying, they're soaking them 10 bucks at the bottom line to get in, to get in now in a, in a regular season game. <laughs> Uh, to, to sit in a bad seat behind a pole. <laughs> Separate them, yeah. Yeah. I think they'd rather pay 12 in a new building to see the game. Mm. That, no, that's that's no, a corrupt know. argument. That oh, it's not right. even worth people, uh, you're, you're pursuing. You're dismissing the idea that people out there would like to be comfortable and actually have a sight line to see a game. No, other than no. The, I'm suggesting they could have that comfort in the old garden properly restored. Oh, yeah, properly restored. The garden as it is right now, nobody, including yours truly, makes a case for its condition. Nobody. The case is that you can take the current garden and make it convenient for modern purposes and large enough to accommodate the Bruins and Celtics needs, which are 14, 15,000 people. And let the record show that the Howard Montreal Forum, which is the motto I think that you're dreaming of, yes. is going down itself, by the way. I know, it. that's a shame. Shame well, on right, them. but because it is inadequate have, to the I modern needs. I have fought with Montreal writers about this, too. I say, Thank you guys have much. a podium, use it. Shame what, on you. What, 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 what is the bottom working. of your, what is at the bottom of your psych that you want this place the way it is? I well, mean, let me you tell, just I'll tell you what, a couple of nights ago, we saw a game that, that'll live in hockey history for, the, for eons. Did anything in the garden hurt that game? The vapor lights that went out would have gone out at the White House had they burned for 14 hours straight. Would have gone out at Pier 4. I'll tell you a little story. This, this is crazy. <laughs> this, this is very indelicate, too. I hope I don't offend anybody. Well, go ahead. You've been doing it for weeks. So this, go this, ahead. Is classic. <laughs> this, this is This is it's, it's the, it's the, uh, hot, the Montreal series. Now, I don't know how to word this so don't make people upset. Well, go ahead. But I, I go to the, to the men's facility, okay, near the, near the press room. <laughs> and there's a big line trying to get in there. 
and somebody had um, had um, given up his breakfast on the floor. I don't know why. Some got very excited. Oh, I can't cheering. imagine why. Was so, that, was that from so night so night here's the point I'm making. Here's the point I'm making. All these guys, you know, are trying to get into the men's room. They're tiptoeing around this, this, this puddle of this stuff. It's, it's pretty great. <laughs> so now I'm inside, oh the, God. inside the facility. Aren't you happy he came on the show? Right. Well, the point I'm making is I'm standing at, at one of these, these, these facilities, and the guy is standing next to me, and he doesn't know who I am. I don't know who he is, and we're just standing there, and he says to me, isn't that typical of the garden? I said, what? He points at it. I says, mister, people puke at Pier 4. <laughs> people puke at the Parker House. What are you talking about? It's not the garden's fault somebody got sick, yeah. but that's a classic <laughs> case of because that was on the floor, the garden must go. Yeah. It's that irrational feeling. Anything bad is the garden's fault. Yeah. The lights go out, blame the garden. A guy throws up a supper, blame the garden. Oh, no, I don't you know, think... Joe, as a tender moment, thanks for sharing. Somehow, I, I, I probably should have... I don't think Larry Moulton's going to come before the do we the, have point that, the point I'm making is even something like that, the garden gets is blamed it, for. That's it, right? Uh, Show's over. I mean, they're going to take it off the air after that. <laughs> I, I, I thought about not telling that story. Oh, no, it's oh. Oh. No. We got one for the next segment. But what I'm saying is that, you see the point? <laughs> that, that man was... <laughs> hey, I got one. That man will tell people the garden, and he'll blame the garden <laughs> for that. Uh, that's all I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Joe, that was very hey, good. Joe. Tell us about some of those great stories you were with the Patriots. <laughs> great. Did I ever tell you about the big and small urinals? I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's the way they knocked Remember out those? the station. Remember yeah. those? They had them all so, so high for the football players, the average guy couldn't do it without a ladder. Uh, this right. show starts off up here. It always ends up down there. Well, we think we need a little break and, and come back for the final segment. Are you leaving? Where are you going? Leave you got to get back in the top. It's time for your newscast, right? You gotta, <laughs> he's got to leave immediately. <laughs> Bob, thank you very much for joining us. This show is a big moment in your life. This will put you right over the top. Every company you represent will tell you not to be on this again. No, you're going to come back next week, right? Thanks, Bob. I will be back for one more segment. Thank you. We can do no more abuse to the garden, so therefore Bob Lobel's left. He's got to get back in time for whatever he has to do. There's an empty chair there. Joe Fitzgerald's still here talking about that pile that was... Ah, yeah. I wish I hadn't told that story. No, well, you've already blown it now. Bob Ryan's here, and we're going to discuss in the last couple of segments the Boston Celtics, the demise of the Boston Celtics, the NBA, where they're going, and particularly what happened to Jimmy Rogers, and is Dave Gabbitt going to be the new director of baseball operations? But before we do this, Bobby, your eminence... I'd like to kiss your ring before you go, but <laughs> it's, it's really been Thank wonderful you. as Great usual. And uh, will you be back for another well, show? Will you, will you tell the rest of the world that this was a great moment you. in your life? Bob, Robert, good oh, to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy Thank it. you. We'll do it again. And you said you like Edmonton in four? No, I didn't say oh. that at all. You know, the, they told me that there was one person on this panel who didn't know a thing about hockey. Yeah, and he's leaving. You say, oh, that's... <laughs> you say Edmonton in four. You've got... I got it. And you'll, you'll take me to dinner. It. You'll take me to dinner if I'm right. Absolutely. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks for being on. All right, guys, uh, here we go. Uh, Robert, um... Uh.